Before we can begin screening in JBI summary, we need to establish the rules for screening within our project. To do this, we can go to the screening tab underneath the overview pane. Here we are presented with the different rules that the project will abide by when undergoing study screening. We need to first decide how many times each record needs to be screened. This can be set at either one or two and can be set differently across title and abstract screening and full text screening. By default, the number of times each record needs to be screened will always be at two. However, this can be changed to one. For the time being, we will keep this at two. That is, each record needs to be screened by two different people. Below, you will also see the people who are currently involved in the screening process. That is, anyone who has participated in the screening process thus far. To see a full list of participants in the project, you can select participants from the overview pane. On this page, you can also see the people who have been invited to the project, those that have accepted and their permission level. All user levels can be involved in screening and can view the screening pane to see how screening has been set up. However, only project owners or privileged authors can set and edit rules. If we jump back to the screening page, we also need to determine who will be responsible for managing conflicts. Conflicts occur when different decisions are made regarding whether to include or exclude a particular record. For example, I may choose to include a record, but the other person screening the same record may choose to exclude it. By default, the system selects the project owner to resolve conflicts. However, any permission level is able to resolve conflicts. This can be changed by clicking on the box, which brings up a list of all active screening participants the user can select from. This can be set the same for title and abstract and full text screening, or it can be different across the two phases. For demonstration purposes, I will set conflict resolution to be managed by all participants. The last option we have under the screening tab is the reasons for exclusion. These reasons are important when we come to full text screening, which is detailed in a different video in this series. Every time that we exclude a record at full text, we need to specify a reason why it does not meet our inclusion criteria. Summary will pre-populate with a default list of exclusion reasons that are relevant to the review type selected when you create your project. Because this is an effectiveness review, a reason for exclusion might be ineligible intervention. This would be different, for example, if this were a qualitative review. You will also notice that we can add our own reason for why we may want to exclude a record. Let's say, for example, we want to exclude a record because it did not take place in the right setting. We could add an eligible setting in the add new reason box and then click add. Now the list has been updated with the new reason. Although the rules for screening are set up prior to beginning the screening process, project owners and privileged authors are able to change their screening rules once the screening process has begun. If you do decide to change the number of times each record needs to be screened or who manages conflicts, a warning message will pop up outlining how the changes may affect the current record screened. You will need to confirm before the changes are made. No screening data are lost if the number of required screens is changed. Any existing decision remains and retains its status. For example, if the number of required screens is reduced from two to one, the decisions for all records that have already been screened by two users and all records that are conflicted will remain.